Scorpio, it's May 2018. I had expected far more intense sorts of uh, activities and mental states with Mars and Pluto in the latter part of April. Um, maybe because these two planets <coughs> regulate your sun sign, uh, our sun sign, as some of you know, I'm a Scorpio. Uh, possibly because of that and also because uh, these conjunctions are taking place in your third house of um, communications and uh, mentality um, and your natural state is in inquiry that this is working better for you. Uh, also the fact that Mars moved away from this midpoint area of these planets then you're not experiencing maybe what a lot of the other star signs are. Third house is generally a good position for these hard-nosed planets, as I call them. Uh, by the way, it's May 2018. For those of you that are new, I'm Dadichi from astrology.com.au and we have our brief but hopefully pertinent readings for you for the month. I'm going to get this um, show on the road, though, uh, because a lot of very, very significant aspects taking place what you see the movements of Mars this month, your ruler, the movements of Mercury, Sun and Venus. These are important. We have to uh, note that the combined influence of this eighth house, Venus, which is your relationship planet, means some sort of renegotiation. You see here the Sun is transiting your seventh house of relationships and thereabouts on the fifth of May, we we have some powerful triangular, what we call the trine aspects from all of these planets. These planets being in the communications segment indicate good communication and there's also these what we call phi aspects which are the golden mean aspects to Venus, your ruler. So they're about around the fifth, sixth, seventh um, good opportunities for you to negotiate, renegotiate, um, and make some important decisions regarding your relationships. The square aspects here, um, because they're all coming from this third house uh, leading up to the middle of the month, indicate communications here, hard communications with co-workers, affiliates, uh, people that you work, managers in your workplace. This is not a savoury combination. The Mars, Mercury, Uranus, Uranus can give uh, very, very, uh, I suppose unexpected disputes, uh, people flying off the handle for no reason, that could even be you doing the same if people are really getting up your nose, that's what can happen. And that's also pronounced when the moon here around the 12th moves into this segment. The 13th, I think it will, there it is there, the square aspect and then the combination of the moon, Mercury and Uranus. So this is a very volatile combination. Mercury moves on the 14th. That's better for your communications there in the seventh house of relationships. Um, and as soon as Venus moves out of this segment, things are going to look a lot brighter for you. Let me just go back there because I think it's important to note that the new moon this month, bang, right here on the 16th is significant. We see the communication struggles you have with your lover, your partner, your wife, your husband, uh, the world at large. We've seen that there are many areas here that are going to be covered by these squares. So the new moon here not only shows new opportunities in the, in the way you deal with your relationships, your business partners, but uh, it shows a new way of communicating. You're probably being a little too forceful. Just lighten up. I keep telling myself that. <laughs> moon in the eighth, sexuality. Look at this beautiful combination of the moon and Venus. Moon is ruling your ninth house of spiritual belief systems. Venus, your lover, your partner. So there's a, com a combination there bringing together your philosophical views. That's also the big, big shift for Scorpio. A lot of major changes are going to take place in your relationship over the coming seven years. This is something that depends on how you this plays out for each of you individually. But Uranus rules your fourth house of domestic activities. So 
there may be because the, again see the squares here Mars is still having difficulty with Uranus so this could for some of you have to do with you know where you live how you the lifestyle that you have with your partner you know if you look at Angelina and Brad maybe they were working too much you know this happens sometimes with actors are your lifestyles compatible are you living in a situation where you just can't quite cement your acts together then you're gonna to have to work on all that sort of stuff really it's very very important and it looks like you're going to have a few years to work on that. Although for Mars, this next month or so is going to be very, very telling. And we'll probably set the, the tenor for the next five or six years for you. Venus moves up here. This is excellent for journeys for some of you. Some of you will be traveling at this time. And these are long distance journeys shown by the ninth house transit of Venus. And Venus also ruling your twelfth house of emigration. For some of you, this could be a time where you decide to, you know, make permanent changes, and that could be one of the underlying factors in influencing this uh, fourth house, seventh house, house uh, relationship lover component. What else am I looking for here? Sun moving to the eighth, shared resources, the money that you share with others, your banking, your finances. Sun is also the government planet; it rules your tenth house. Moving into the 8th house, there's a lot of research that's going to be necessary at this time. You're looking at the hidden aspects of what you do for work. Looking at different angles for how you can improve the, uh, the sort of way you work and what it is you do. For some of you, you may have some breakthroughs there as well <coughs> in terms of what it is specifically you want to do. You may have refined what you've been doing for years and now find that you can take that into a whole new direction. Very lucky for you, whatever you decide with the Moon and Jupiter here in the Sun sign of Scorpio. Uh, the very last aspect is this one in Sagittarius. Beautiful for your finances. Moon is your lucky planet. Full Moon in the second house of finance, bringing with it uh, extra money. And that's a really nice note. To complete the month on. I'd like to see you here next month if you'd have me. In the meantime, don't forget, I'd love you to subscribe and also visit the site astrology.com.au. I've got more there for you, but I won't tell you too much here about that. Suffice to say, more detail on, us, on the month, the year, and the day by day reading. So please join me there. And again, next month, take care now. Bye, Scorpio.